You know, in life you get a lot of turning points and turning points impact and influences our lives in a good and bad way. And if we look back at our childhood life, we would say that there was a lot of things that had an impact. I heard of a man that said to a little girl one day, you already look so ugly, do not cry because then you will just look uglier. We do not realize that we create turning points in other people's lives. You see, you might have forgotten about that person. It doesn't mean that you didn't change that person's life forever. It makes me think of the teacher that told the child, you know, you are so useless, the only thing you'll be good at is to feed some pigs. Years later, this teacher was enjoying a meal in a well-known restaurant and um, he enjoyed this meal so much he asked for the chef. And when the chef arrived, he asked the chef, Listen here, did you know from childhood that you would be such a brilliant chef? And the chef, recognizing this teacher, said, Yes, I had a teacher that told me one day I will be feeding some pigs, so here I am. There is power in turning points, and we cannot act ignorant as if we do not change other people's lives. I knew about an old lady that really had an addiction problem, and she used to fall, and she had bruises and marks all over herself, and somebody stood in and helped her in a crucial time. And she went to a rehabilitation um, place, and they helped her there, and up until today, which is years later, she still not going back to that bad habit. We need to know that we all play a part in somebody else's turning points, whether it's good or bad. It's a good place to be if you can be there when somebody reaches a good turning point. Maybe you've been waiting for a turning point and need one right now. It doesn't matter how many bad turning points you made in the past. If you surrender and give your life to God, He will change things around for you. Yes, all of us needs good turning points, but we need to remember that we do not need a good turning point, we need a God turning point. Interestingly enough, how many actions do you do when you turn around? We would say, well, it's only one, but it's not, it's two. You turn around and you face a new direction, but you also turn your back against something of the past. By turning to God, you will turn your back against the enemy. My eyes are turned to the Lord at all times, for He will take my feet out of the net. When you turn your eyes to the Lord, He will take your feet away from the traps. But the foundation that God has laid is solid. On it is written, The Lord knows who His people are. So everyone who worships the Lord must turn away from evil. If you really want to turn away from sin, you need to turn to God to make their eyes open, turning them from the dark to the light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may have forgiveness of sins and a heritage among those who are made holy by faith in me. When we turn to sin, we tend to forget that two things happen. One, we turn to sin, yes, but two, we turn our backs against God. For even now, some are turned away to Satan. So, in which direction are you facing at the moment? By his foolish behavior, a man's ways are turned upside down, and his heart is bitter against the Lord. When turning towards him, you become bitter towards God. For the evildoer is lifted up because of the purpose of his heart, and he whose mind is fixed on wealth is turned away from the Lord, saying evil against him. When your heart turns towards sin, it turns away from God. But the Spirit says clearly that in later times some will be turned away from the faith, giving their minds to spirits of deceit and the teaching of evil spirits. They will turn from the truth and eagerly listen to senseless stories. When we listen to senseless stories, we turn away from truth, we turn away from God. My friends, watch out. Don't let evil thoughts or doubt make any of you turn from the living God. Evil thoughts will make you turn your back on God. And you cannot turn towards evil without turning your back against God. The best turning point you must experience is to turn your life permanently towards God. Paul speaks about this where he says this is the basics of being a child of God. 
For this reason, let us go on from the first things about Christ to full growth, not building again that on which it is based. That is, the turning of the heart from dead works and faith in God. There is an uproar in heaven when you turn to God. I say to you that even so, there will be more joy in heaven when one sinner is turned away from his wrongdoing than for ninety-nine good men who have no need of a change of heart. Even so, I say to you, there is joy among the angels of God when one sinner is turned away from his wrongdoing. We need to turn away from the past. Let your search be for the Lord and for his strength. Let your hearts ever be turned to him. For in the past we were foolish, hard in heart, turned from the true way, servants of evil desires and pleasures, living in bad feeling and envy, hated and hating one another. Jesus really wants you to turn your heart to the Father. Jesus answered, healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. I didn't come to invite good people to turn to God. I came to invite sinners. God really wants people to turn to Him because He knows it will help them. How long will we keep our stubborn hearts away from God? It's a good feeling to get what you want, but only a stupid fool hates to turn from evil. The heart of God is for you to turn to Him. The Lord isn't slow about keeping His promises, as some people think He is. In fact, God is patient because He wants everyone to turn from sin and no one to be lost. We all need to turn away from some type of sin, and we know if we continue on this road, it's a road of self-destruction. Maybe God is talking to you right now about a sin that you need to turn away from. You cannot turn your back against sin if you're not willing to face God. You cannot say you just close up for sin and just continue in the same direction. You need to turn around. For the love of money is the root of all evil, and some whose hearts were fixed on it have been turned away from the faith and been wounded with unnumbered sorrows. Trust God. He specializes in turning messed up lives into masterpieces. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. God is waiting for you to reach your turning point. Turn back to Him while there is still time. So what would God do when you decide to turn back to Him? You, the Lord God, keep my lamp burning and turn my darkness into light. He will turn your darkness into light. You have turned my sorrow into joyful dancing. No longer am I sad and wearing sackcloth. He will fill my heart with joy. So right now, you have an invitation from God to turn to Him. So then, let your hearts be changed and be turned to God, so that your sins may be completely taken away, and times of blessing may come from the Lord. To turn around might have a negative feel to it. Say, for instance, you were on your way down to a valley below, and now God is expecting of you to turn around. Now all of a sudden you think in your mind, now I must go back up the mountain. But that's not how God works. God, when, when you turn around, God creates a new destination with a new route that He calculates for you. So, have you experienced your turning point yet? Jesus also told them another story. Once a man had two sons. The one son took the money of his father, he turned his back on the father, and he made the world his oyster. But in the end, he would have been glad to eat what the pigs were eating. But no one gave him a thing. God is waiting for you to reach your turning point. I will go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. Treat me like one of your workers. Without you realizing it, for a very long time, God has been waiting for you to reach your turning point. He said, the time has come. God's kingdom will soon be here. Turn back to God and believe the good news. It's easy to fall, but we need to stand up and we need to turn back to God. As a child of God, we even get directions from Him as to how we need to turn back to Him. I correct and punish everyone I love. So make up your minds to turn away from your sins. Listen. I am standing and knocking at your door. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will eat together. 
He is waiting for you to turn away from sin. He wants to spend restoration and healing time in your heart. You and I need to turn back to God. Then he said, Put away the strange gods among you, turning your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. You need to turn to God, because God wants to help you and is there for you. So pick up your heart and take it to God, so that He can create that turning point you need in your life. I dare you to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Before you knew God, you were slaves of gods that are not real. But now you know God, or better still, God knows you. How can you turn back and become the slaves of those weak and pitiful powers? I am surprised that you are being so quickly turned away from Him whose word came to you, in the grace of Christ, to good news of a different sort. We must turn to Him only. But I have this against you, that you are turned away from your first love. It's time to turn back to God, but the truth is we cannot turn to God without turning our backs against sin. We also need to help others to turn back to God. When they learned about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they escaped from the filthy things of this world. But they are again caught up and controlled by these filthy things. And now they are in worse shape than they were at first. What happened to them is just like the true saying, the dark will come back to lick up his own vomit. The pig that has been washed will roll in the mud. We really need to help people to turn back to God. My friends, if any followers have wandered away from the truth, you should try to lead them back. If you turn sinners from the wrong way, you will save them from death, and many of their sins will be forgiven. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning men away from the nets of death. How many people do you know that will be helped when they turn to God. The apostles left and started telling everyone to turn to God. God wants you to help people to turn to Him. It is even the desire of people that died without God that their loved ones will turn to God. Then the rich man said, No, that's not enough. If only someone from the dead will go to them, they will listen and turn to God. God wants to use you to help people to experience a turnaround to Him. When people walk towards sin, they walk away from God. And when you turn towards sin, you turn your back against God. To turn your back against God sounds rough, but that's exactly what happens when we turn towards sin. And it is this, you don't have as much love as you used to. Think about where you have fallen from. And then turn back and do as you did at first. If you don't turn back, I will come and take away your lampstand. So we need to turn to God while there's still time left. So what exactly happens to you when you turn to God? I mean, you can even look differently at these two verses. Go in through the narrow gate, because the gate to hell is wide, and the road that leads to it is easy, and there are many who travel it. But the gate to life is narrow. And the way that leads to it is hard, and there are few people who find it. This narrow road is not just a 180 degree turnaround from the wide road. It's a new road with a new destination. Trust God to be your new guide in your new adventure to your new destination. All this turning might have made your head spin. So let's end with Jesus. How did Jesus make everything possible? My God, my God, why are you turned away from me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my crying? And about the ninth hour, Jesus gave a loud cry, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. It is my God, my God, why are you turned away from me? My sins was placed on Jesus, so much so that the Father turned his back on his Son. All because of our sin, God turned away from Jesus so that we can turn to God again. Lord, thank you for creating turning points. It demonstrates to us that you offer us a better life with a wonderful destination. It shows us that our lives can change. Lord, we do not want to waste any time anymore. We understand that our sins were put on you. And that was so bad that your father turned his back on you. All so that I can have the opportunity to face the Father. I accept you as the one that took my punishment. Please forgive me for my sins. I am tired of my road and all that goes with it. I do not want to reach the destination of this wide road. 
I invite you to take control of my life. I invite you into my life. I know that you are now in my life and the right route is calculated for me. I'm pressing the start button, awaiting my new directions to my new destination. With you as my navigator, I now know that one day I will hear you say, Welcome home, my child. You have reached your final destination. I put my trust in you to guide me while I am still here on earth. Now I can be called a child of God. And Lord, for those of us that have been saved a long time ago, we admit that we do not face you all the time. Father, what a shock to realize that we turn our backs on you every time we turn to sin. We realize now how dangerous it is to do this. Whenever we stand before a temptation, may we remember that we are trying to decide if it's worthy to turn our back on you when turning towards that sin. Thank you for the wake-up call. When we are facing the wrong direction, running after sin again, we realize that we need to turn around and follow you. We turn our back on sin and will continuously do so. May we keep you in the picture of our lives, focusing on you all the time. May we help others to stay on course, facing you through every storm. We praise you for turning our lives around. Thank you, Lord. Amen.